On this week's episode of Marketing O'Clock, we cover news of subprime rates for Amazon affiliates. Anyone can make short video content with YouTube's new video builder. We find out what Greg's really doing at three in the morning. These two built digital marketing quarantine houses for PPC and SEO. Not me. No way. <laughs> Is Arnold Schwarzenegger Australia's next top model? Tune in to find out. All on today's show. Marketing O'Clock is your weekly dose of digital marketing news, a proud part of the Search Engine Journal Podcast Network. We record every week from the Cypress North Studios located in beautiful Buffalo, New York. Tune in to our critically acclaimed Famous Friday News Show for insights, updates, rants, and much more as we cover the full gamut of digital marketing for you. If you want to follow along, just check out our show notes or head over to marketingoclock.com for all of the links from today's articles. And please subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. Hey there, I'm Greg Finn. I'm Christine Zernheld. AKA Shep. And I'm Jess Bud. And it is officially Marketing O'Clock. Here on April 17th, 2020. Remember you can catch our famous Friday news show each and every Friday morning. All of your digital marketing news from the week. Powered by the digital marketing community. Join the conversation. We are at Marketing O'Clock everywhere. So what's going on, y'all? I heard it was uh, yesterday was a birthday bud over there. Hey, Happy hey. Happy birthday. Did you go anywhere fun <laughs> yesterday? I didn't, but I saw something out my window that was extremely disturbing. Oh, no. <laughs> there, <laughs> it was garbage day, and we have a young child, so we don't bring our cans in immediately, right? It had been a couple hours, but they were emptied, and they're sitting on the side of the street, and this gentleman walking his dog allowed his dog to pee directly on the handle of my garbage can. And I just, I mean, what a birthday. <laughs> How low is your garbage yeah, I was just going to say that. Like, this is a big dog. Oh, well, no, is actually, it, it was like a chihuahua. No, it was a tiny dog. The garbage can Wait, was on its yeah. side. Oh, you missed that part of the story. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the, okay. Yeah, it was over on its side because it had already been emptied and we just hadn't brought them back in yet. And the garbage pen, you know, they just throw them. So it was eye level, if you will, with this tiny chihuahua. And the man like was watching this happen. He didn't, it's not like he was distracted by oncoming traffic or anything. I was appalled. I was so upset. Can I, can I go silver lining on this? Mm -hmm. Maybe this, this gentleman was trying to help. Maybe he thought the heat could be cleansing um, and that it would actually clean you know, keep, get rid of any virus. That's ridiculous. You. It is. I mean, and I'm the queen of finding the silver lining, but I do not accept that one. I'm still <laughs> upset. <laughs> Thanks for trying, though. All right, Jess, who's this week's sponsor? This week's episode of Marketing O'Clock is brought to you by Ahrefs. Whether you work for a big brand, run your own small business, or do freelance work, getting traffic to your website is always an issue. And Ahrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool set that solves that problem. It gives you the tools you need to rank your website in Google and get tons of search traffic. If you want to learn more, you can check out their blog or YouTube channel for step-by-step -step SEO tutorials. They have a seven-day trial for only seven bucks. We talked about it a few weeks ago. Tim over at Ahrefs talked about why they had that seven-day trial. And I follow Tim, obviously, as everybody should. And he was on a podcast that was called, I mean, everybody has a podcast, but this is the business of podcasting. And he was on this podcast talking about the results he got from spending $200,000 on podcast sponsorships. Wait, so it was a podcast about podcasting? Yes, he was a guest podcaster on the Business of Podcast podcast. Okay. Talking about the results he had from spending $200,000 on podcast sponsorships. Okay. Stay podcast again. <laughs> <laughs> it was very enlightening. And again, my, I, I try not to give too many recommendations in life because they typically let people down. The fact that he runs through it and talks about the fact that it's not that data-driven for him, that he gets people coming up and talking to him from conferences, from podcasts themselves. It was just really enlightening. He answered a bunch of questions um, about what he looks for in podcasts other than you know just all the humor that you hear between us three. <laughs> And I, it just was a great look at somebody who's spending a lot of money advertising. And there were a lot of candid answers saying it's, it's not the most trackable channel, but it works and we're going to keep doing it. So we'll put the link in our show notes over at marketingoclock.com. 
So you should head there, but really head over to Ahrefs.com. Seven day trial, only seven bucks. And today's show is also sponsored by Optio. Optio helps Google Ads managers automate time-consuming manual tasks so they can spend more time on high-level strategy and creative work. Optimize accounts, monitor performance, track budgets, and get alerts when important changes happen. And right now, our listeners can get a six-week free trial of Optio. If you want it, go to optio.com forward slash S-E-J. That's O-P-T-E-O dot com forward slash S-E-J, as in single engine jet, <laughs> like search engine journal. And it's better than the 30 days you'd get if you didn't have that link. Optio.com forward slash S-E-J. Thanks to our sponsors this week, and we'll get into some features a little bit later as to how we use each. And moving on to the news this week, YouTube launched a video builder. This is a free beta tool that helps businesses make short videos, even if they don't have access to a design team or any actual video footage. So businesses can upload images, text, and logos and choose from a selection of layouts, fonts, and music, and they can animate static assets or add video assets if they have them to create a six or 15 second video. That's kind of random. It's six or 15, that's it? Yeah, I guess the six is like, there's a lot of ads that are six seconds, like Twitter's are six seconds, right? And like some of the Google ads video formats are only six seconds, but I don't know about the 15. I would like a 30. Do you have any pull to get a 30 for me? I have absolutely no pull in this (laughs) area. Um, And they're making a big deal about how it's like a light tool you know, video builder light. It's, you're not going to make a feature presentation on this. And some of the layouts are actually really cool. So there's one where it looks like a person holding a phone and you can add your image onto it. And then the person's hand swipes. You could have like multiple images or show like how an app looks or how a mobile website looks. I hope that one doesn't get too overdone and annoying because I really like it. And apparently you can also immediately create a Google ads campaign from the video builder interface after you upload the video, I would not recommend that. It sounds like a terrible idea to me. And like your ads might end up on some shady websites with like millions of impressions. Yeah, don't do that. That That's like the AdWords Express, the Google Ads smart campaigns of this. Yeah. Video making, making quick ads, awesome. Instantly making a campaign from said video, awful. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Definitely. But This is a really neat tool. You can use the videos for ads, like we said. You could go in after to the actual Google Ads interface to set up your campaign, or you can put the videos on your website. There's a lot of options of things you can do with them. We will have a link in the show notes for how you can sign up for the beta, and Google promises that most requests are handled within five business days. I hope they keep themselves to that because this is an awesome tool for people who need some creative right now and don't have access to a design team and obviously nobody's creating video footage right now unless they're filming themselves at home. So nice tool, nice timing. All right, next up, more company-based targeting has rolled out for LinkedIn ads and shout out to Tim Halloran over at AimClear for this. That's at Tim Halloran on Twitter with two M's. And Duluth, oh, Duluth, Minnesota, AimClear. Is that where Duluth trading came from? I don't know if I give him credit for that, but let's go with it. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Speaking of giving credit, this also came to us by way of power listener Andrea Cruz. Hey, girl. So in addition to the new company growth targeting that we alerted you guys to back in episode 116, you can now also target users based on categories that their company falls into. So categories like Forbes, World's Most Innovated Companies, or Fortune Global 500, which is lovely for those folks. So far, the category list is kind of short, though. Quick question. Do they have silly marketing podcasts as a category? (laughs) No, they don't. And if they did, I mean, would we be in there? Because we're silly. We're nothing if not silly. (laughs) Silly or dumb? You make the call. (laughs) You make the call. (laughs) So the list really is short whether or not silly marketing podcast is in there. I scoped it out today. There's only 27 categories so far, and 24 of them are country specific, and they're not all in the U.S., so it's spread around the globe. It's still a cool feature, and I can imagine that they'll be adding more categories. So keep an eye on this. But they're all kind of like that most innovative companies or Fortune 500 or there was a lot of like LinkedIn 
categories. Like they've named some uh, some companies, some things, and it reminded me kind of like superlatives in high school. So I thought that that might be kind of fun. So it's a free idea for Facebook, superlative targeting. So if somebody's friend group is like super cool or maybe they won best dressed in high school, we can show those folks some ads for shoes or like class clowns might get a new trick gum ad. I don't know. I just I, – I really got excited about this news when I read it. I'm like, oh, company categories, great. But I just don't really – the companies are awesome if that's exactly who you want to target or the categories are awesome if that's who you want to target. But there just wasn't much in there I think that applies to a lot of folks right now. So when I saw this, Jess, I rejoiced Stop because it. I saw something on there I really liked. I get it, the Fortune 500, the innovative companies, who knows, but even things like that, fastest growing companies, that's pretty cool. And if you've got something where, let's say you have um, employment-based products or something like that, that's cool where you see it's based off of growth. So I, I thought that was cool. Um, and I think a bunch of people could actually do well with that. And I wonder how they do that. Like, is it just because you have more employees signing up for LinkedIn or how do you calculate that? That's a great question. I well, don't that know. was Fortune. So Fortune calculates that. Oh, okay. That. And also, I guess after this conversation, Jess is saying that I should add to my Facebook profile that I won Best Dressed in eighth grade. Absolutely. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Did really? You- Wait, didn't you win like ninth a I, I like to bring it up when um, my mom talks about my brother's military service. <laughs> I'll just oh, be like, you know, yeah. I don't know if I'm, you remember. Yeah. It's apples to apples. <laughs> <laughs> That's apples to jelly bean ship. <laughs> All right. Something that people are definitely not rejoicing about is some new changes over at the Amazon affiliate program. And I don't, we don't really get into affiliate marketing that much on the show. The gist of affiliate marketing is that you're sending a lead over to a website to purchase a product in, in most cases, and you get paid for that lead. Amazon is one of the easiest affiliate programs out there because they have everything and it's simple. There's lots of plugins that can just swipe out Amazon links and put it in with your code and you can get paid. Well, earlier this week, Amazon sent a notice to its affiliates and those rates are being slashed and big time slashed. Things like furniture and home improvement categories an affiliate used to make 8% of that sale, and now they're only getting 3% of the sale. And it was really across the board for these, these changes. So the biggest one was furniture and home. Other things like headphones, beauty, musical instruments, business and industrial supplies used to be 6%, a really lucrative uh, niche, but it's now 3%. Things like grocery was 5%. It's now 1%. This came out on the 14th of this week. And it, the changes are occurring on the 21st. So little time for people to adjust and, you know, pivot, really. Um, and you can check out everything that had changed over on the show notes. Again, a lot of movement there. And I'd seen in general just other messages from affiliate programs that simply shut down pay- payouts. They went full Grant Cardone on everything and, and it's just shut everything down, apparently. So it's sort of that dangerous game that is affiliate marketing. Like make sure that you've got some other options because it, the minute you just have one option for you know, making money, as soon as that changes, you're out of luck. So if you did rely on Amazon affiliate program, there are some other things that might fill that need. Uh, Walmart.com has a good affiliate program. It was less than Amazon in a few different categories. We'll put everything over in the show notes, but you can still get, you know, from 4% to 1% for different things. So you may want to check that out. Target also has an affiliate program in eBay. You can usually find most things over on eBay, but Target is still pretty good. You know, home and outdoor living is still anywhere from 8% to 5%. So check that out if you are looking for something else. I'm trying to figure out from this list, like, why are business and industrial supplies in the same category as beauty and headphones and musical instruments? Are those the same thing to them? I don't know. I, the minute I, I thought the same thing, I thought this was super weird. And I thought it was weird that there's just headphones, not like <laughs> electronics or anything. It's just headphones. So many people are buying them. You know, I bet there's one for just puzzles now. 
probably, then that's probably down to zero. Yeah, I don't even <laughs> see that on this list. This is not complete. This is not a complete list. Anyway, if you're an affiliate, make sure you have a complete list and diversify your different programs out there. And I'd imagine we're going to start seeing more things coming from things like Wirecutter, where you see a lot of Amazon links. They're likely going to get swapped out and you're going to be starting to be directed to other sites. And next up, Kirk Williams at PPC Kirk logged into Google Ads on April 15th. Actually, I'm just assuming that. He tweeted this on April 15th and found that he was able to sync the columns in his company's Google Ads managers accounts across accounts. So it appears from the screenshot that his team was able to save a shared column template and they can apply it to each of their clients' accounts. So some co the columns are standardized and their eyes don't always have to like look for the different columns when they're sharing a screen or whatever. So it looks like he just clicked columns in a report and under modify columns, there was an option to sync columns. When I first looked at this, it seemed like a small thing at first, like we report on all these things caught in the wild every week. But I feel like this would actually be such a game changer. Like if we all got this, we would be like, oh, remember back in the day when we all had different columns on our accounts and we had to change them every time? Like if you had a corporate set and when you're looking at a report together in a meeting or whatever, you didn't have to strain your eyes. Like it makes me think of looking at the periodic table. And this would just be so nice. I love looking at the periodic table. Oh my God, it takes <laughs> me so long to find stuff. Like I can't do word searches. It's hard for me. But the worst part of this about this story is I saw this and I was so excited. And I went to share it with our team in Slack, pasted the tweet in, saw it was a Twitter link. And just <laughs> call me out. I accidentally copied and pasted the tweet underneath, which was a Nini Leaks clip about the stimulus checks that went out this week. And it was like, honestly, the funniest thing on the internet, but it was like not about work. And it was really embarrassing. No, and Replies I didn't know hysterical. what to say. Because yeah. she, because she um, I guess she was on The Apprentice, like however many years ago. So there's a clip of her talking to <laughs> her friend of me or whoever. I don't know. I don't watch Atlanta. I watch the other franchises. And oh, she's wait, like. Wait, she was on Apprentice? Yeah, our favorite show, oh, Celebrity yeah. Apprentice. Was that with Geraldo? No, I think it was a different season. That season had oh. a different housewife but nini's like oh i've got that money now i've got that trump money and that the joke was that that was like everyone when they got their stimulus check and it was just really awkward that i sent that in the professional channel i, I was just like desperately <laughs> trying to find some sort of weird connection to marketing because i really thought that she shared this on purpose and i'm like oh well, we we do that segment segment where you can talk about anything <laughs> as long as it's related and i just like couldn't think of anything and finally i was just like shop <laughs> segment segment question mark like <laughs> it, I mean it was a funny clip so it made my day but then she deleted it and I'm glad she's bringing it up now <laughs> all right we're gonna have to put it over in the show notes at marketing o'clock um, <laughs> if you want to check it out but I love this I, I don't have it in my accounts yet from what I've seen it would be like you said Shep a game changer to make one set of columns that you love and not have to recreate it every single time and every single account that would be amazing Something else amazing, and we can rejoice for it as well. Google is launching a new video series to replace its in-person conferences. Is that amazing, Jess? I don't know. I was looking for a transition just, that I'm felt just, right. I'm just doing deja vu to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So this article is from Matt Southern over at Search Engine Journal, and he starts the article by saying, Google is bringing several of its top advocates together for the first time in a new series of videos. No, it's not called Google Endgame. This crossover event is called Webmaster Conference Lightning Talks. And I finally feel like I'm part of the pop culture club because I actually got that joke. Do you guys get it? I think I get it. Is it about the purple guy that, that has a glove? <laughs> what? Wait, maybe I don't get it. What are you talking about? No, it's about Avengers, right? Thank you. That's what I thought. It's a Marvel Isn't joke. The guy with a glove from that show, or is he Batman? Is that Iron Man that you're thinking of? He no, has he gloves. has a glove. It's he has like that fabulous rhinestone glove. Yeah, Batman does. He got the he bejeweled a glove and and made vapor. No, the purple guy. Who's the purple guy? The bad guy. Oh, he's a bad guy. Yeah. <laughs> All I've seen so far is the Captain America movie, which I thoroughly enjoyed. By the way, Jess, how did you say you get this? 
Because you absolutely don't get this. I'm into the Marvel Universe. I saw the Captain America you know, origin story. I, I know a lot thing. of things in life. And you know what? I know that you're not into the Marvel Universe. Just if is you don't know about Thanos, the purple guy that, that destroys the world. Well, he was... Oh, wait. Is he in the Thor movies? Is that also Marvel? I don't know. He's in Avengers Endgame. Jess is fully engrossed in the gamer life, and she's fully engrossed in the Avengers world. You're, you're spending too much time with those recaptures. All right. So. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Shep, for defending my honor. I will see you at Comic-Con. All right, on to the news. Because the pandemic has forced Google to cancel their actual Webmaster Conferences, they're going to be releasing a series of videos. Again, they're called the Webmaster Conference Lightning Talks, and they're going to cover topics similar to what you would have seen at these conferences with presentations from John Mueller, Martin Split, and other familiar faces from Google. So you can expect new videos to be added to the series throughout the rest of the year, and the first one is going to drop this month, so keep an eye out. The awesome part about this is they're not live, so you don't have to make an appointment to be at your computer at a certain time. You don't have to register for anything to watch these. I disagree. If you're going to have a conference, it should be live. That's, That's the whole conference. part. There could be. I know, but they're, repla- they're, they're replacing this. It's called Webmaster Conference Lightning Talks. But these are right? the lightning talks. They're the real the fans are going to stay up and t- like at midnight as soon as they're released. You know, like a new Taylor Swift album, and they're going to be there ready to tune in. Yep, and- you're going to pre-buy that Taylor Swift concert shirt. You're going to be sitting there <laughs> waiting for John to take the screen. Yeah. No, it's called a Webmaster Conference Lightning Talk. There should be Q&A. There should be back and forth. You have Google. You have school, uh, Sorry, you have YouTube. You could do a spotlight video. When it comes out, you go live. Like, do it live. Bill O'Reilly, do it live. <laughs> Whatever. People are really busy during this time, so maybe they're just hoping that everyone will just be able to watch at their leisure. Whatever. This is the time. Nobody's busy. Everybody's home. Nobody's <laughs> anywhere. Nobody's traveling. You're not on an airplane. You don't have any excuse. I was just seeing if you were listening, and you were. So, yeah. I mean, it's going to be on the YouTube channel, the Google Webmasters YouTube channel. Watch them at your leisure, guys. Don't listen to these two. All right. Next up, we have more COVID-19 news. What Corona is doing to the SEO visibility scale. And this comes from Lily Ray over at Path Interactive. And Lily has updated her previous post that we covered about the impact of COVID-19 and organic search visibility. She does a fantastic job breaking down the winners and losers by average change in visibility. Some of the winners, food and drink. People are now doing all that themselves these days. Other things that were winners were video games, consoles, and entertainment, music. One thing I didn't really get, fashion and apparel? Yeah. What are you doing? You're just bored at home and, you know, you need new leisure wear. Hmm, them leggings. Do do you? Who's going to see it? I don't know. I'm just, like, itching to, like, buy something just in general because I haven't in so long. (laughs) (laughs) Well, a funny story. I had to go to Target to pick up medicine for my kids, and I went. Like, I had to go. I couldn't get around it, right? So I went in, and going to the the pharmacy, I looked, and I had to pass the beauty section. And there are people in masks in the beauty section buying makeup. And it was just such a mind hack to to see this. People with masks (laughs) on their face buying lipstick. It was crazy. But apparently, fashion and apparel are still doing good from a visibility standpoint. You got to do it for the gram. Yeah, that's true as long as you're six feet away from your phone. Um, So things that we're doing poorly were finance, romance and relationships. I mean, I guess I see that. Beauty and alternative and natural medicine, probably for good reason. She also breaks down the biggest winners and losers in terms of websites themselves. Some of the biggest winners are Home Depot, New York Times, Rotten Tomatoes, um, Genius. And some of the losers were unfortunately like fitness sites. There's Daily Burn, Cafe Delights, Dunkin' Donuts was a big loser, Planet Fitness, um, and Mercola, a, a natural medicine site. You just said Dunkin' Donuts as if it was a fitness site. <laughs> that makes me happy. <laughs> and, uh, I had to work it in there. It was number it was number three. I didn't want to <laughs> poo-poo this and, and give you give you some fake news here. It was it barely squeaked out past Planet Fitness. What does one do on DunkinDonuts.com? Get fit, obviously. I get I mean the coupons? I don't know. Hot take? What does one do with Dunkin' Donuts? <laughs> 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 <I'll> <laughs> <rush out laughs> coffee. 
No, I don't. Do you like Dunkin' Donuts coffee? It's fine. It's better than Tim Hortons. Yeah, it's definitely well, fine. That's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. I never You're got in trouble now. <laughs> the food is is it seems like fake food. Why are you Dunkin eating Nuts. there? It's a coffee place. That's your first. But the coffee problem. stinks. Like I try the food. I'm like, what is people? What are people doing here? <laughs> I don't know. And I'm not like a hoity-toity guy. I'd go to McDonald's. They have better coffee and better food. McDonald's does have really good coffee. People yeah, don't talk too. about it enough. And they got the golden arches. Just should feel nice. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, if you want more information, George Wynn over at Search Engine Land has an article called "16 Straight Days of Rankings Volatility." There's a video there with people adding in about these different SEOs digging into COVID-19 and what Corona is doing to search. And Matt Southern talks about, I think with Google piece where he covers what the search behavior is, I guess what the state of the search behavior is and how it's changed and some information from Google, which honestly, those Google things aren't that helpful. Do you remember like the Google of the year? We're like, things are great. Everybody like loves everything. That's exactly what I was thinking, Greg. Like the heroes. <laughs> yeah, like everything's <laughs> everyone hero. search for heroes. Like, okay. They just pick and choose what they want to talk about. Mm-hmm. I know. They're like, yeah, oh, it's perfect. And you look you actually look at the data and like number one is Harvey Weinstein. You're like, oh, what? <laughs> so it's, bad. It's terrible. <laughs> like this uh. All right. Well, shop I'm with you. That's bad. But we've got some good stuff too. And it's time for the good vibes and marketing wins segment of the show and first comes from amber no no last name she's just amber like share Elvis. it's amber and it's <laughs> at awesome underscore amber 19 on twitter and she says i just finished my 2021 planning high five emoji is that what that is or hands raised raise up yeah yeah Hand that's raised? like praise celebrate rejoice our rejoice fiscal- <laughs> there you go jess hey. our fiscal year runs july to june so ahead of the game, even with COVID-19, sunglasses face, and Dwight Schrute GIF. So that's great. Also, we had some good news from John Kagan, at John Kagan on Twitter. He said, I put on pants. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> that's more than you I've done. did it. <laughs> Thank you, John. And everybody appreciates that. Glenn Schmitzel at, at Hey Glens said, I love the podcast in response to us, which is great. And we responded, we seriously love you too. And we do love all of you, our listeners. Now it's time for this week's take of the week. This is a hashtag fire digital marketing take with extra spice served up for you. We simply deliver the take for your consumption. We give no opinions. We don't influence. You make the call. And this week's take of the week comes from former guest of the show, Joe Martinez at Milwaukee PPC. And he says, so many people, parentheses joking, and parentheses, have been asking me for advice on how to make the transition from office to remote work. My advice, parentheses, not joking, and parentheses, is to take all the work you're doing in an office and just do those tasks at home. <laughs> <laughs> that Good is advice. an amazing life hack. <laughs> There you go. I At Milwaukee BBC on Twitter. There you go. Just do what you're doing in the office. Perfect. And now it's time for this week's I See Why Am I. This is something out there that you just might not have seen. Maybe something you overlooked, but you shouldn't have. And this week's I See Why Am I comes from Alan Walton at Alan Third on Twitter. And he says, if you see a Facebook ad screenshot, and it's not showing view through conversion versus click through conversions, disregard it entirely. You're not getting the full picture and the person sharing is either unaware of this breakdown or misleading on purpose. Alan. Or maybe they just missed it. Yeah, maybe you just missed it. (laughs) Maybe something they overlooked. (laughs) But they shouldn't have. (laughs) Now it's time for this week's lightning round. At this point in the show, we split up our content into three parts, paid, organic, and social. This week's paid lightning round is brought to you by Optio. Optio makes managing Google Ads accounts simple and efficient. It automates time-consuming manual tasks so you can spend more time on whatever the H you feel like. (laughs) Weird time where things are different now. You need help while you're catching the scramble up, while you're pivoting, while you're living in this corona world. 
Optio is like a virtual assistant for your account. I can't tell you how many times I take these Optio emails. I see some abnormalities. I forward them along. In a time like this where things are changing so quickly, you need a tool that can help you be better. Shep, how to use Optio. So Optio checks your account to make sure that you're not doing certain things that are almost always bad. For example, the things you're doing are bad. Optio is not bad. They're great. So for example, they'll notify you if you have search partners enabled in a campaign um, in your network preferences because you shouldn't have this on, but Google tries to hide it from you. Like I'm very passionate about this. They make like the scariest settings so small and you often forget that they're there if you're copying campaigns or launching them quickly or whatever you're doing. So Optio scans your account, make sure search partners isn't enabled so you're good to go. This is literally the exact opposite of what Google recommendations do. Google recommendations say you will get 5% extra recommendation points if you turn on search partners. Optio <laughs> is your BFF, the one that you should listen to, the one that's not going to that's setting a trap for you and telling you to turn the search partners off. It's amazing. Yep. To learn more and get a six-week free trial of your new BFF Optio, go to optio.com forward slash S-E-J. That's O-P-T-E-O dot com forward slash S-E-J. And we have a quick paid lightning round for you this week. First up, Reddit announced that they have updated their political ad policy. So their new definition of what constitutes a political ad is if any of the following situations are present. So an ad related to campaigns or elections or that solicits political donations, ads that promote or discourage voting or voter registration, ads promoting political merchandise or issue ads or advocacy ads placed by political organizations. So they're saying that any ads that fall under this category will have to be manually approved and include clear disclosures about who paid for the ads. They also said that political advertisers must verify their identity and political ads are only accepted within the U.S. at the federal le level. So if you're outside the U.S. or you're a state or local election person, you're not going to have any political ads on Reddit. And finally, they have a new political ad subreddit that's going to show every political ad and everything someone could want to know about it, like literally everything. It's literally my favorite subreddit. <laughs> I, just, I just refresh nonstop on that one. It's I was so just going to say that. Like, this is where Greg is at 3 a.m., just like refreshing the political ad subreddit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see that one? What a zinger. <laughs> really got him good. <laughs> Sleepy Joe. Huh? What? <laughs> Sleepy Joe. Is that Sloppy Joe's brother? What? I don't know. There's stupid names for all these Wait, different parties. What is Sleepy Joe running for? It's, I don't know. One of these candidates has names for the other, and who knows? And one has a bus that says no more malarkey on it. It's a weird world. I can't like believe it's bus. real. So when Greg goes to the subreddit, he'll be able to see the advertiser, the targeting they used, spend, the duration of the ad, even the billing zip code, which I thought was a lot. And you can find Greg there all the time, like I said. So go check it out. And next up, the Google Ads Data Hub, which allows advertisers to link Google Ads Campaign Manager and Display and Video 360 accounts to uncover advanced analytics and measurements, announce some enhancements, including close to real-time analysis, query templates, and self-service account linking. They also announced that they are testing audience activation, which will allow advertisers to build audiences based on clicks and conversions for Google Ads Campaign Manager and Display in Video 360. So it's like a remarketing list on steroids. So the example they have in the article is you could create an audience list in Ads Data Hub of users that have already purchased your product. Then use that as an exclusion list to ensure you don't continue, continue to show your ads served via Google Ads, Display Video 360, et cetera. Real question. What we all want to know. Are they going to have a subreddit for political ads? Because if not, I don't care. <laughs> that's, all I, that's all I'm here for. I don't think so. I'm sorry. And that is it for paid. What is happening in organic this week? This week's organic lightning round is brought to you by Ahrefs. Ahrefs is your go-to tool for anything SEO related. If you're looking to get more data as to how you're doing well, how your competitors are doing well, how your backlinks look, Ahrefs has everything you need. And I mentioned it earlier, Tim was on a show 
And he said, some of the most natural ad reads are best. So I took the script and I threw it out. I'm done with that one. <laughs> Hrefs is amazing. And you should check it out for a few reasons. We go through every week one of the ways that we use Hrefs every week. So Jess, how do you use Hrefs? All right. So last week we started our Content Explorer series. And there's a really cool filter in the Content Explorer that can show results for a topic that you're searching on based on when the pages themselves were first published. So if you're researching a topic that's kind of time dependent or time sensitive, you can adjust your filters to show only the freshest content, like super fresh within the last 24 hours, content that's just super old or anything in between. It has a custom date range option so you can travel to any point in time that you want and look at the results. It's kind of like the DeLorean of SEO tools. And we talked about it earlier today. There's a lot of volatility right now Mm -hmm. in the search engine results pages. You need some help. It gets crazy times for $7, you get a seven day trial and you can be alerted to these different changes. Be alerted, have some help in your corner. Head on over to hrefs.com to sign up. That is A-H-R-E-F-S dot com to sign up today. All right, Greg, what's happening in organic this week? Well, I'm going to take you across the pond and even a little further because we're going to France and a ruling by the French competition authority accuses Google of not complying with laws that order digital organizations to negotiate a fair price for use of content. And this article comes from Richard Monti over at Search Engine Journal, Martini Buster. And it wasn't as cool of a of a graphic this week. It was just a French flag. Oh, I mean, it's but still pretty nice. It's nice. He always has the best graphics. The best. And he said it's a major loss for Google because it appears to create a precedent that Google is going to have to pay news publishers for the right to use snippets, titles, and images. Google had always had the, the case saying, this helps publishers. Us showing these things is a help. Well, France said otherwise. They said it's causing harm to publishers. So they have three months to negotiate in good faith with these publishers to pay for the rights of titles, images, and snippets. And the first thing I immediately thought of was that search engine land, it was a, an article. Somebody had leaked an image that Google made. And they made an image where they stripped out everything from the news results. And they, the, the, the search query was latest news, and they showed top stories with no image, nothing in there, and they tried to have like a sob story about why they should be able to show graphics and pull in titles and snippets, and it was so desperate and so thirsty, and it's like, if you can't show this stuff, you wouldn't just show a blank gray screen, you'd adapt, and France is telling you to adapt, and that was the first thing I thought of. Do you guys remember that one? I don't. No, I don't either, probably because there was nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll put it in the show notes if you want. But it was just so funny. They were looking for so much sympathy, and it was just pathetic. But that's what it's going to be in France, unless Google says they're going to pay. So it's actually a pretty big deal in the French news sector, which, you know, I've looked at the, the metrics. We don't have a big French following, but people in France do listen to us. I don't know why. Oh, we don't have a big French following? We have a following, not a big one. Maybe like two or three people. I mean, what's wrong with them? Maybe it's the fact that we aren't speaking French, do we? <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, new reviews are showing at Google. Sort of, sort of. And this comes from Western New York's own Mike Blumenthal over at Local U. And he originally came out saying, reviews are back. And then he changed it and said, sort of. So apparently, Google started allowing people to leave reviews again amidst this pandemic we're in. So things were paused for a while and and probably for good reason, right? Like you don't want people to leave a bad review for a restaurant because the governor said that you have to be closed. (laughs) Like that's not a fair review. But apparently some reviews are showing now. It's not for everybody. He said he spoke a little bit too soon when they're all out. But if you do have a Google My Business account, Just monitor it a little bit more and get on top of them. If somebody leaves you a nasty review because you're closed during a pandemic, you know, give a nice response and kill them with kindness and say that, unfortunately, it's a pandemic and I can't be open right now. And that's, that's it. People understand that. And I would hope consumers reading reviews like that would also be understanding that that person just needs to relax. (laughs) 
Totally. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to be out of your house. <laughs> you know? All right. Next up, podcast. We reported on this a few weeks ago that they are dead, and they're even deader now. Why are we even doing this anymore? <laughs> The growth is just slow. The growth is slowed and it's continuing to slow because people aren't commuting all the time and you're probably not out there exercising as much as we learned earlier. So the week of April 6th through the 12th, we saw the growth drop again. So the growth went down 3%. Uh, Last week, it was 1%. The week before that, it was 4% drop. So again, we're not seeing any increases, but People are stuck at home and whatever. There's, it, I blame it on sports. I think a lot of that is there's not too much to talk about for some of this stuff. Yeah. And did you say people listen to podcasts while they work out? Glenn Gabe does. BFF for the show. How, I hope not ours. I think that's all he does. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> not I all. would rather just listen to the sound of my breathing than listen to my voice. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like... A terrible experience. I listen to podcasts sometimes when I run. I can't. Actually, most of the time I do. Okay, if you hadn't told me Glenn Gabe did it, I would be calling you a psychopath right now. Well, you can still call me a psychopath. That is, That sounds like the whole point of listening to music when you work out is to like get you in the mood, you know? Like, no, 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 no. That's where we're different. That's where we're different. You want to get in the mood to run. I'm never in a mood to run. I don't have a mood to run. I want to be taken away from running. I want to be carried off into a different conversation. I don't want to think about running. I don't want to even know what's happening with my feet. I want to be engaged in a different conversation. Okay. Well, listening, at least a business podcast, that just doesn't sound fun to me. Yeah. I don't listen to business. (laughs) I don't listen to business (laughs) podcasts when I'm running, but no, funny stuff that, that, that works. Sports stuff, it works. Except for the fact we don't have sports. Anyway, I checked. Do you guys know I checked our traffic itself and our listens we're down a little bit we're down about i'd say probably 15 percent um from where we are usually and i also one of the cool things if you're a podcaster you can apply to be on spotify's podcasting analytics and if you do so you can see lengths of podcasts what do you think the last two podcasts that we've launched the average listen time is i'm scared i know Average? Okay, so there's people who listen to it for two seconds who bring the average down. And this is only Spotify users. Spotify only can give analytics on people using their platform. But then the whole thing was like, last week's was so outrageous. It was like an hour and a half. Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to say like 20 minutes. Jess, what do you say? That was going to be my guess, but I got to, I got to fight with shop. So I'm going to be optimistic. I'm going to say 40 minutes. Our average listeners over the past two to three shows are 58 minutes, an hour and six minutes, yeah. and 52 minutes. Wow. That's great. But there's a drop-off. The last time the Shep wasn't on the show, I think we're at 40 minutes, and then back up to 50 minutes. So Shep, you're the people's champ. People well, love you. It's just my mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I disagree. We've got a, we've got good numbers on that. But yeah, we're, we're down a little bit, but um, also people – do consume us in bunches it, it appears so um, check out your numbers and and i think it's mainly sports next up youtube viewership is actually up but youtubers aren't earning as much money and this comes from not northern not eastern not western matt southern over on search engine <laughs> journal and apparently the pandemic is increasing youtube views but the advertising rates are getting lower so we've pulled advertising on certain topics uh, people consuming news specifically, we've ch- pulled it for, for some clients, and apparently that is the reason. We are a little long today, so I'm going to fly through some of the rest of the stuff. I got all the news today for some reason. Um, next up from Search Engine Land, this comes from George Wynn, and he says that the White House wants us to use schema for COVID-19 announcements. So you want to use a special announcement and event attendance mode tag when it is appropriate that's what the White House wants us to do. I would like more testing, please. Can I can I give the White House? Can I give the White House an order? Is that possible? I mean, they did just give me twelve hundred dollars. So okay. <laughs> well, all right. I just want more testing. I'll use the schema. You give me some more tests. How about that? All right. And lastly, here this week, Google Play is getting a new kids section filled with teacher approved apps. So if you're an app builder, if you have something that you think would be teacher approved. 
there's a new section and I bet that it's going to see a great deal of usage during these times when people are trying to distract their kids so that they can record a podcast. So if you can, um, I don't know what the process is. We have a link over there in the show notes. And I also like it's teacher approved. Like, how do you know it's teacher approved? I, it reminds me of those commercials where I don't know if it's Trident or Dentine or something like four out of five dentists recommend Trident. Like, how do you know? I mean, I feel like they get away with it because they say teacher, not teachers. So, like, they just found one teacher of something that was like, yeah, I approve. Go for it. Now it's not you a know, lot. You're like, oh, choosy mom, choose Jif. whatever that is. Yeah. Jif. And that, I think the real story is I don't – none of these things actually stick on me, right? Is it Jif? What is the one that, like, the cereal that moms like? The, ce- the cereal? Uh, or is it kids like the cereal? Kids like all cereal. You like mean the peanut like butter? Kicks? 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 Kicks. I don't know. Oh, yeah. there, it's definitely something with kicks. But you said nothing sticks on you. Does Band Aid brand stick on you? <laughs> no, I have silicone skin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Nothing sticks on silicone. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you're trying to do. Okay, there. those are two that, super that, annoying jokes. No, that was that the tagline. <laughs> I'm stuck on Band Aid brand. Because <laughs> Band Aid stuck okay. on me. Yeah, but that's not people recommending it. I know. We were just talking about slogans at this point. Okay. You're saying I don't even know how kids. we got here. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. We'll just make it up. Yeah, f- Four out of seven digital marketers recommend Marketing Clock. Three, three out of three. We're three people. We could say that. Yeah. Marketer digital approved. Marketing, digital marketer approved. All right. Let's move on to social. So first up, everybody's favorite Twitter help series, Good Copy, Bad Copy, released a video with tips on creating an effective poll. So I've created a poll for you guys. Do you want more information on this topic? No. Everybody hates this. This Everybody hates Good Copy, Bad Copy. It's so dumb. I say no thanks. Awesome. Perfect. Those are my options. No and yes. You chose correctly. Moving on. All right. Listen up, creators, influencers, whatever you call yourselves now. This one's for you. The IGTV app has released a series of updates. So to highlight top creators, there'll be a new showcase banner in the home screen with featured content for that creator and who shows up for each user is based on their behavior. So it's not just like you can sponsor all of IGTV. They've also added a new hands-free recording mode, which sounds fun, a discover tab, and a new preview option that plays IGTV clips in Instagram stories rather than just a freeze frame. So that's all very neat. Are people using IGTV? I feel like they're trying really, really, really hard to get people I, on there. First of all, I want to say, hands-free recording, we need it now. There's nobody there to record you. Second of all, I actually have watched more IGTV than ever before over this quarantine. What about Quibi? Are you on Quibi yet or whatever? I'm not on Quibi. But I've enjoyed like watching my cousin do her makeup. And um, I've watched some Duggar like Q&As. <laughs> You guys Q&A. Play- <laughs> Q&A. Yeah, what's going on? Ginger was talking about how many puzzles she had done. And her husband, Jeremy, was talking about his Bowflex workout routine. Well, that makes sense as an IGTV. Because if they're trying to keep it to 60 seconds and they're going through those 26 kids, how many? Um, 19. 19? Counting. I mean, you, you, need, you need IGTV for that. Totally. Are they still and counting? Are there more children coming? They well, got to be You done. don't know. You don't know their journey. You're right. I don't. Do you guys want to play an embarrassing attention. game? Yes. So I was trying to set, fix my settings, and I, I'm so bad at Instagram. I was trying to find a bunch of things I've saved, and for some reason, I found my time spent on Instagram last week, yesterday. Do you know where that is? No. I would think low, but then you said embarrassing, so I would think high. Well, I, I forgot where to get it now. Okay, the I'm, whole week. Yes. Okay, so I bet Jess is second. You're first, and me third. How do we do it? Okay, so you go to your face on Instagram and you hit <laughs> the, the hamburger nav in the upper right. Yeah, something called your activity. Okay. Okay. How much time? I see a spent? daily average. Same. Yeah. What is your daily average? Should I go first? Yes. Twenty-eight minutes. I'm Just. sixteen minutes. I'm twenty. Twenty minutes on Instagram. Who I'm knew? A day? Mine's not that bad. 20 oh. minutes for quarantine times? Yeah, no, that's pretty not cool. bad. I'm surprised by Greg, though. That seems high for you. It's where I look at all these knives and stuff. Yeah, it's his. People making knives. It's called Knivesgram. Ever heard of it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's the stupidest, funniest thing I've heard all day. <laughs> Greg's gonna get targeted like if the FBI used like used like ad targeting to try to find bad people before they did bad things, I feel like they would think Greg was a murderer. They would not. I look at artful I look at people making art and I try to make art. I've got it right in front of me right now. I'm making a handle tonight. Your knife is art? Yeah, well, I mean, not mine, but He's other people. Do. Himself. I will send you some pictures, and you will change. <laughs> Go to marketingclock.com, and I'll send you some stuff that, that Kyler Roy does. You'll all like it. Kyler okay. Ren? Kyle Roy. Who? Big knife guy. <laughs> oh, I, wait, honestly, from the knife I show? watch all I watch on YouTube is knife videos. Jason Knight on YouTube. <laughs> Just you know, Jason Knight from Sports of Fire. Knife Jason Knight. <laughs> That's all I watch. I, I don't have sports anymore. I used to only watch sports. My wife would come in and it would either be, it would just be sports all the time. And now it's just live video of some guy using a power hammer, making a knife. That's it. That's not so bad to just have on in the background. It's probably very relaxing. I watched a fascinating video yesterday. It was a helicopter live footage. First, they flew over all the Universal Studio parks. And then they flew to Disney World and flew all over, all over those empty parks. It was so sad. They? There were more than one person in the helicopter? No, I just don't know how they identify, so I'm going to say they. Well, it doesn't sound like social distancing to me. I think it was a person alone in a helicopter. Okay. That makes me feel better. All right. And if you want to feel better about supporting a small business, you have a new option on Instagram. So they have announced for businesses new stickers. They can add stickers to their stories to encourage folks to order food, purchase a gift card, or make a donation. So if you're about that, you can go ahead and do it. And they have, again, in their example, used Greg's second favorite fake business, Little Lemon. You guys remember Little Lemon? No, are they Instagrams? Yeah, they're like the Jaspers of Instagram, no? We had a fake account game one of those weeks. Do you remember that? I made up a bunch of fake companies. Yeah. Yeah. And Little Lemon was one of them. And ever oh, since right, then, right. yeah, since then, and that was like months ago, I feel. And I always thought that Little Lemon was a baby brand, but I guess it's a restaurant unless they just change what it is. Jasper's is always a market, but Little Lemon's a restaurant in this example. Anyway, whether you're a baby brand, a restaurant, or anything in between, Anyone with a LinkedIn page will be pleased to know that they can now create events on LinkedIn. So previously, this event's functionality was only available to a select number of company pages. They were going to be rolling it out wider eventually, but they have moved that up now in light of COVID. So they have opened it up to all businesses. And that's great for anyone that's hosting, say, a webinar, a live stream, or anything else in the event space. You can now share that on LinkedIn, which is great. Also great news, Facebook has released simple downloadable templates that businesses can use to share key messages on their social accounts like, yes, we're taking orders or shop with us online. And they have also provided a set of automated responses, which brands can use to reply to DMs on Facebook and Instagram. And I know you guys are probably thinking that this sounds like excessive handholding, and it does in the real world, but a lot of folks are operating with slimmer teams right now and may not have the resources to do these things on their own, so I will take it. But what may be a little bit excessive is that Facebook has also published a, hold on to your seats, 64-page guide for brands on how to maintain connection with their audience during this pandemic. 64 pages. You mean 64 words, right? No, 64 <laughs> pages. Are you kidding? <laughs> I am Just not be kidding. Just be yourself. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, and I don't know. I didn't read it. <laughs> we, we, we don't need 64 pages of how to respond in this. Be helpful, be human, be sympathetic, and just be who you are. So while we're talking about bad things we watch on TV, instead of going through 64 pages, I think I, I, I might have the cake. I might take the cake in my household for bad shows. Jess, you are egregious bad TV watcher. Like what, what, what have you watched lately? Um, I wasn't prepared for this question. What have I watched lately? Oh, I've been watching um, reruns of reruns. Anything on Netflix is a rerun unless it's original. Billy on the Street. I've been watching Billy on the Street like crazy. And it's funny That's and good. it's good. Usually you'll say something like, I watched, you know, N Northeast Lumberjacks. You don't want to know what I've been watching, watching on YouTube. <laughs> what have you been watching? Usually you're egregious. I've been watching these folks. Um, they build uh, like primitive cabins and longhouses and things over hours. And it's just, it's not a live stream, but they just record themselves. <laughs> we just leave it on in the background. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I think my, my wife takes the cake. I came in and caught her watching America's Next Top Model. 
<gasps> you want to be on top? But it was not the U.S. version. It was the Australian version. That's a huge <laughs> thing. Every, that's a good show. Is but it? it wasn't the Australian version from 2020. I sat down. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, what is this? What is this? It was the 2007 <gasps> season of America of America's Next Top Model, Australia, from 2007. I think that sounds amazing. I want a link. Shep, how old were you in 2007? You're the youngest of us all. I choose not to identify. That's how bad it's gotten in the Finn household here at the quarantine. 2007 Australian American Next Top Model. Come on. That's got to be really good. You're so wrong. The old stuff is the best. That is the absolute worst show ever created. How dare you? No. Oh, my God. When Tyra yells at people, it's so good. Was she an Tyra's Australian great. person? Well, she's got the boots and the tooch and all that stuff. And smize, all that stuff. Great. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're talking about Australia, right? The country? Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. I was going to ask if he was on it. Beat me to it. Yeah. Somebody anyway, say, I'll be back in an Australian accent. <laughs> I'll be back, mate. I'll be back. <laughs> Jess, give it a go. I'll be back, mate. <laughs> we need an accent person on this show. We that have no perfect. skills in that area. That was perfect. And that brings us to our real life segment. Straight out of our accounts and into your ear holes. It's time for Working Hard or Hardly Working, where we talk about what's going on in our IRL work. Good, bad, or otherwise. Chap, what's been happening with your accounts lately? Okay, so ever since we've signed up for Asana... Um, we get this from Basecamp too. We get like a daily update and I usually just ignore it and like mark it as red and think it's an annoying automated thing. But I have really enjoyed over the last couple of weeks, like opening it every morning, looking at my upcoming tasks while I drink my coffee, like before I turn on my computer and it gets you like ready for the day. You don't have to see all the tasks you have coming for the whole week, but it's just like, okay, this is what I have to do today. And it's really nice. And I also didn't know that it's easy to find tasks that you've assigned to others. Like you can just switch it when you're looking at your own tasks. Probably should have known that, but I didn't. And it really helps me when I figure that out. And if you don't have tab B enabled, you should have it enabled. Pro tip. What is tab B? You don't know? No. Just turn it on. It's a surprise. Okay. I'm going to start opening those emails too, because you really sold it. All right. So for me, we had a really interesting puzzle this week. We recently helped a client get Google Analytics set up for the first time on a couple of new sites. So while we were testing our setup, we couldn't see our own or anyone else's traffic for that matter in real-time reports. We were trying to figure out what was wrong because there were no filters applied to any of the views that we were using. And we triple checked the GA installation um, on one of the sites. It was installed via GTM, and the other site, or the other site, it was installed manually. Both were set up correctly from everything that we could see. But we used that Google Tag Assistant Chrome extension, and it wasn't detecting Google Analytics on these sites. So we're like, "What is going on?" Long story short, we did a lot of troubleshooting. There was a content security policy in place on the sites that was blocking the GA scripts. And we needed our dev team's help to resolve that. And in fact, I needed their help to even write that last sentence because I wanted to make sure that I got it right. But they did. They resolved it. And GA is now properly tracking. So this was a new one for me. And I've been doing this for seven years now. So if you're not seeing traffic in GA and have exhausted all of your typical troubleshooting steps, just add this to your list. Check for a CSP, a content security policy, because it might be blocking that GA from tracking. Greg, what about you? All right. So something bad this week. I just want people to know to check out what apps they have linked to their Twitter. I didn't have any problems, but I went through and I, I noticed that I needed to change my password for something. And I went through to change my Twitter password. And when I was doing that, I went to go check check out apps that had access to my Twitter account. And it was surprising. So we talk about it all the time. Make sure you check who has access to your Google Ads account, who has access everywhere. See what apps have access to your Twitter account. Because even if you change the password, those apps still have access. So don't forget to do it. We'll put a little screenshot in the show notes if you want to know how. It's just up in your settings. And I was quite surprised from some of the things I just failed to clean up over the years. 
Now it's time for this week's WTH. Misguided. You're like, who does that? <laughs> Just get rid of it. I'm over it. <laughs> Where we rant, rave, and roll our eyes about a trending digital marketing topic. What are we coming to? Honestly. See what had us asking. W-T-H. This week. This week's WTH is brought to us by Facebook's new product experimentation team because they have launched a new app called Tuned. It is specifically designed for couples and it allows the couple to create an intimate social network just for each other. To which I say, no, thank you. Wait, what? <laughs> I thought you'd be all about this. Are you kidding me? They have this little screenshot in here that says, a private space for you and your most important relationship. Like, how about you just talk to each other? What? Yeah. No one needs this. This makes me want to, like, throw up in my mouth. So It's nice. It's kind of nice. No, no it's, it's not. not. Have your own space. That's what we – nobody has their own space anymore in this pandemic. So the app connects Spotify for music sharing, and a couple can send each other photos, notes, cards, and voice memos. They can also use custom stickers and reactions because you can't just say how you're feeling. And it's free to use and seemingly doesn't require a Facebook account, but it is an I iOS only app. I don't, do you guys think a couple can make it if like one person has an Android and one person has an iPhone? Is that either of you? No, we're both iPhone users. No, we're both Android users. So I, I'd be interested to know like the numbers on that, but right now this is only for iOS. But this is like, if it was realistic, you'd be able to like send clips of you eating loudly and like bothering your partner or like passing gas or like giving a list of chores. Like th this isn't realistic. This is like all the good stuff and it's not setting people up for success in my opinion. No. And you can also do all of those things with a text message. Yeah. Like it's but really it's not, not an app, hard. Jess. It's not an app. You I know, don't guys know how easy that. apps are? People love apps. It's appetizers, like... <laughs> apps on your phone. What well, if you shared appetizers? I That's feel pretty like good. It's just trying to steal people's information. So like when they feel like someone's on the rocks, they can like advertise a new dating app or like some food delivery service or, you know, one of those so, companies that can help people through a breakup can swoop in. Wow. I'm with you. This is ridiculous. But can I poke holes in your argument here? Okay. What if you're quarantined away from that person? Text them. Yeah. FaceTime. Yeah, Whatever. That's true. All right. You're right. This stinks. It's not like <laughs> Why it's the only technology without stickers? Like, stupid. I hate it. I'm with you, Shep. All right. Now we are on to our segment segments. What did we call it last week? Odds and ends? Did we? Grab bag? The grab bag. Who knows? I like it's grab a, bag. The grab bag. The segment segments. Jess, what do we have first? All right, so we're going to stick with our here for you, we're here for you segment that we started last week. This week's we're here for you is for all of the beer-loving gym rats out there like myself. So, Michael, no one's going to call me out on that, guys. I paused. Actually, sorry, I was muted. Um, <laughs> half of that is true. <laughs> Which half? <laughs> um, I think you can guess. Yeah, I'm not a gym rat, guys. But for those that are, Michelob Ultra will be hosting weekly workout live streams on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Your choice. If you enjoy yourself, you can then tip the personal trainers that are giving you the workouts, and Michelob will match those tips with donations up to $7,500 per workout to raise funds for gym workers that have been facing hardship due to COVID shutdowns. That's very nice. And they'll be streaming these every Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern. The workouts will be followed by a virtual happy hour, you know, so you can undo everything that you just did. We're here That's for you. That's cool, but like if I'm going to be comfortable, they're going to have to be in German. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I'll let them know. <laughs> All right. Next up, we've got going viral. And this is where we give you an idea that's too big to fail, too good to fail. And this week's going viral is the quarantine house memes. You guys have seen these, right? You oh, put a is list it of people you, together. You pick the list, people. Yeah, you put a list of things together. I saw somebody in Buffalo putting a list of Buffalo beers in a fridge. You pick the, the quarantine fridge. But you basically have a quarantine house. And then you just pick no reason, not because something's better, just just a house that you're you're riding with, basically. And it's too big to fail, the quarantine house. Do you know what I'm saying, Jess? Have you seen these? No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Should I look it up? No, it's sort of like those benches you saw, like the lunch tables, right? Where you had a lunch table and you pick a table. But this is just a quarantine house and it's who who you're you're with, like who you what house you're selecting. A lot of people had like different sports teams and players or like 
sports pundits is what I saw a bunch, probably just because who I'm listening to, listening to. Shep, have you seen these around? Yeah, I've seen them all over the place. It's like a lot of different celebrities and stuff. And they're all so popular. So if you're a brand, come up with a quarantine house. I saw one that was really good. It's from Consumers here in Buffalo. And it just listed fridges. And you had to pick which local beers you wanted. Tons of engagement. Tons of people sharing it. So if you want to go viral, make a quarantine house. And this is so flawless that we made our own quarantine house. So we made, I made last night, and I was like yeah, a couple of days in. Let's be clear, you made it. <laughs> I made this. And this is just, the keys with the quarantine house, you want to have fun. It's not about what's the best. It's just, you're, you're making a house of things. So I made an SEO quarantine house, and you can choose which house are you. And this is going to be like, hey, we're going to, will this go viral? <laughs> yes or no? And so we made house one, house two, house three. You're going to have to follow us at Marketing Clack to see them. But we made an SEO quarantine house and a PPC quarantine house. Can you guys see? Can you guys see them? Yep. Yeah. All right. So we've got uh, SEO quarantine house and a PPC quarantine house, and it's just completely random what who's in each one of these houses. But this is the gist. We're gonna put it up on marketing clock. I'm sure it's gonna cause a ton of controversy, but this is just been fun. It's just completely random, and if and I think this is an easy way to go viral. If you really need to <laughs> in times like these, what do you guys think <laughs> of the quarantine pick? house? Do you want me? Do you want to read them off? Should we just pick ours? I don't. I well, I don't know. Them. I mean, no way. these are all nice people. I can't pick one. Well, yeah, it's just a random. It's not everybody. It's not best. It's just a, a random selection of people, and it's which SEO quarantine house are you? House one is Brett Tabke, Barry Schwartz, Alita Salise, Cyrus Shepard, Brian Dean. House two. Danny Sullivan, Deborah Mosteller, Glenn Gabe, Casey Gillette, Ruth Burr, House 3, Gary from Google, Rand Fishkin, Neil Patel, Bruce Clay, Cindy Crum, House 4, John Mueller, Brittany Mueller, the Mueller bracket, <laughs> Lily, <laughs> Lily Ray, Dr. Pete Myers, and Marie Haynes. So we just made it fun. We just grabbed 16 folks, put them in a house. We'll put it out there and see if see if there's any pickups, see if we go viral on that. And we made a PPC house one. I'm just, you are not we, you two. You, you're, you're part of this. We have nothing to do with this. I don't even understand this. Come on. How do you not, to pick a house? Oh, I understand which, it which, now, but like, why are they houses? Like Gryffindor? houses. It's like Targaryen. Yeah. What? All right. So PPC house. You be, yeah, Jess, all, all the relevant TV shows, you got them all. All right, so which PPC quarantine house are you? Okay, P- this one's kind of easy for me because house two is like a lot of really fun girl power and then Stephen John's. Well, so- look, there's no winners. In this. Everybody wins this game. House <laughs> one is Julie Bikini, Akvila DeFazio, Brian Garvin, Sam Rucklowitz, and Joe Martinez. House two is Ginny Marvin, Andrea Cruz, Stephen John's, Perna Vergie, and Pamela Lund. House three is Brad Geddes, Melissa Mackey, Dan Gilbert, Kirk Williams, Frederick Valleys, and house four, John Kagan. I don't know if he's got pants on. That's like the <laughs> key dis- distinguisher there. Yeah. Amy Bishop, Michelle Morgan, Mark Irvine, and J.D. Prater. So and it's like, are there six bathrooms or do you have to share with these people? That's information I need. I mean, that's the house. You're in with the house. So that's kind of it. But anyway, we'll put it up. We'll see if it goes viral. Um, again, if, if, our, if our segment holds true, it should. So check that out at Marketing Clock on any of your social platforms. And lastly, we're to our freebie segment here where we talk about what is free here now during the pandemic. And Google is extending free access to Google Meet. So if you are a G Suite user, you can now use Google Meet for free through September 30th. And lastly, GitHub is making private repositories free with unlimited collaborators that are available to all accounts. So it used to be uh, uh, private and now it's free for everyone. So that is great. And now for this week's cool tool. As a reminder, our cool tool segment is not an official endorsement or paid mention. We're simply sharing something we found in our travels that may be of use to our listeners and is really, really cool. This week's cool tool is the Meta SEO Inspector. It's a Chrome extension designed to help you review the metadata on a page without looking at the code yourself. So with one click, you can get an organized report that makes spot checking specific elements super easy. You can also export the full report into a PDF if you need to share it, say with a colleague. So we haven't fully vetted this one. We just used it to do some quick checks for an account recently, and we came across it. So we wanted to share it with you. It's free. You can head on over to our show notes for a link or search for the Meta SEO Inspector in the Chrome Web Store and judge it for yourself. 
Now it's time for our must-read marketing article of the week. An article so advanced, so in-depth, so detailed, that we simply cannot cover it in its entirety on today's show. And this week's must-read marketing article of the week comes from Gianluca Ferrelli over at iloveseo.net. I actually looked up iloveseo.com. I figured like that might redirect. Doesn't. So it's iloveseo.net. But it's how to optimize your e-commerce for Google Images and visual search. And Gianluca does a fantastic job breaking down why visual is so important what images in search now means, images in the universal search, rich results, images and structured data, how to do SEO for Google images search, how to do SEO for Google visual search, and then the conclusions that come from this. There's a nice table of contents and it is a very lengthy, very thorough article. And my favorite thing, tons of examples. And the examples are all like gamer examples for you too. It's a bunch okay. of kind of like, look like, Lord of the Rings figurines? I don't know, but I mean, you guys are gamers, so you should like that. But it is a fantastic, very well done article if you are into e commerce and want to do better. Thank you, Gianluca. May the force be with you. And that does it for today's show. Thank you to Ahrefs and Optio, our fantastic sponsors. And if you're looking for another great podcast, don't miss this week's episode of the Search Engine Journal Show. Yeah, it's Mark Trapping in from SEO Clarity, and he breaks down a lot of the different changes going on over on the Search Engine Journal Show. Don't miss it. It is now officially not Marketing O'Clock. Remember, you can catch everything from this show on marketingoclock.com. And while you're there, please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. And we will see you next week. Thanks for listening to Marketing O'Clock. If today's show was of value to you, please subscribe, leave a review, or share with a colleague. If you are looking for more information on today's topics, head over to marketingoclock.com for links to all the articles that we covered.